Welcome Crossbridge. Hey, I'm excited to share with you today. I do recognize, man, you're everywhere. In fact, it's kind of, kind of interesting for me to think about. Like I try to picture sometimes you in your living rooms, maybe uh, some of you, I've seen some of you like out on a walk or run and even someone said, hey, I just, just listen to you. Like I, I know that you're worshiping from all kinds of different places. And uh, that's the beauty about this, right? That I, I do believe that we can worship from anywhere. And, uh, and I'm thankful that you're giving me the time to listen and trusting that, that God may have something to say to you. Um, and I'm trusting that too, that it wouldn't be about my words today, but it really would be about God connecting these human words to you, to speak to you, to speak to your heart. And so um, I'm going to pray for us because I'm just going to ask him to help me too, to deliver the message today. And then we're going to get rolling. Father, thank you. I thank you for the opportunity to continue to speak to people who are spread all over the place. People in different states, people who are sitting in their living rooms, people who are traveling in the car, um, people who are out on a run. God, God I, I just thank you. I, I thank you that we can still be united even though we're apart. And I pray today that you'd help me. Help me as I communicate that you would take these words and, and you would apply them to our hearts in a way in which we know it's you. We know you're speaking. And God, uh, I'm, I, I feel really passionate about this mes message today, and I just pray that you're going to help me. I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, so we're talking about hospitality again. Um, pastor Kevin got us started. Hancock, our Peru campus pastor, got us started last week. And so I'm picking right up from there, and, and we're going to talk about it again. In fact, um, I, you know, I, I was thinking about it. In fact, this last week, my son, my, my wife's phone rang. It was a number from California. Uh, I don't know about you, but there's times when, you know, something shows up, it's from a different state. And what do you do, right? You, you look at it and you go, I'm not answering that because it's a telemarketer. And so um, my wife saw it and said, oh, it's California, you know, probably just a telemarketer. She handed it to my son and she said, hey, you talk to him. And so <laughs> she answered it and he was like, hello. And he began to talk to him, and, and really, we were just kind of, I was kind of smiling at him because I thought, he's just going to have fun with this telemarketer. Probably not the right thing to do, but, but anyway. So he, he starts to talk, and, and I'm, and I'm kind of just watching, and all of a sudden, he gets this puzzled look on his face. He says, Dad, I, I, I think they're real. And he hands it to me, and I was like, hello, what do you need? That's exactly how I said it. Not very nicely, not like a pastor should, right? And, and it was so interesting. It was someone who was like, hello, I'm so-and-so. And it was a cross bridger, right? It was, a, it was a cross bridger that volunteers for my wife in children's ministry. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. Like, I didn't mean to sound so gruff. I thought you were a telemarketer from California. So anyway, um, I need to up my hospitality game a little bit because I was not very warm and welcoming. The truth is, though, for many of us, we struggle to be hospitable. There are times where clearly we just, we're just not very open to people. We're not very warm. We're not very friendly. I was looking at a definition this week, and here's what it says. Hospitality is about investing in others' lives and learning how you can best serve those around you. I, I phrase it like this, and I really do think like, Pastor Kevin's definition, right, would, this, would be this. Making room in our lives for others. When I think about hospitality, right? Like making room, making space for others. And I'll tell you this, it's one thing to do every couple months. You know, it's one thing to do, I think every once in a while we'll have a story where we're like, oh, I was at a, you know, whatever, I was at the gas station and I saw this guy and, and, and we get moved like once every few months to do something really like out of the ordinary for someone. But, but I think what God is calling to goes beyond these once a, you know, every three month kind of occasion. Like what does it look like to make room in our lives, maybe even on a daily basis, that we would be available for God to use you? Like, like it, would, it would go beyond scheduled opportunities. I remember years ago, my wife came home from work one day and she said, hey, there's, just so you know, there's a young girl um, that I work with at the school and she's got some rough situations going on in her life and so she's probably gonna be here tonight and she's just gonna stay in the guest room. And I was like, um, oh, okay. You know, I, I really, I didn't have a problem with it. And, and as she began to talk, I said, 
So like when you say she's coming and she's going to stay in the guest room, like, like, is that one night? Is that two? Is that three? I just, I just kind of wanted the details, right? And I could just tell. I could tell by the way the conversation was going. I wasn't sure there was an end to what we were thinking. And sure enough, this, this young lady, she moved in with us for the whole school year. And it actually ended up being a beautiful thing. My wife is still connected to her. And, um, but, but when I think about that, right, like how many of us are really open to, to really like true hospitality? Making room for others. Here's what I'm, I'm just going to say it. Jesus was really good at this. Jesus was so good at this that when you think about Jesus and you look at the Bible, and it was always like Jesus was walking somewhere. If you read these stories, he was always like on his feet. He was moving somewhere, and he was always stopping for people. He was always making room. I wanted just to look at some of these Jesus stories, and I'm not so much going to read them, but I just want to kind of tell you some of these stories. And some of them kind of fall right in line in the, in the book of Luke. Uh, Luke's account in chapter 5 and chapter 8. And then there's a story out of Mark chapter 1. And so let's just, let's just take a look at these. These are really cool stories where Jesus is making room for others. There's this story in Luke chapter 5 where Jesus was teaching inside a house. And there were this, this crowd that was gathered around and they were surrounded, like inside the house, it was packed, right? And, and they, were, they were listening and he was teaching and, and included, even cl- included some teachers and, uh, of the religious law. And the place, according to scripture, the place was packed out. Word got around though and people kept showing up and, and these men showed up outside with a paralyzed man, like on a stretcher. But due to the crowd and due to the room being full, they, they couldn't get to him. But, but man, they were focused, like they were desperate and desperate situations call for desperate measures. And so here's what they did. They, they somehow or another got on the roof. They began to dig through the roof and they dropped this guy on a stretcher in front of Jesus as he was teaching. And, and Jesus pauses in, in this mess, right? And he says your sins are forgiven. And then he gets some questions about that and eventually says, he says, pick up your mat, basically your stretcher, and like get walking, like you're healed, walk on out of here. And what a beautiful story, right? Um, then just a little bit later, you got where Jesus is out on this boat and he's out with his followers. And the story says that Jesus is taking a nap. Now we don't see very often in scripture that Jesus is taking a nap. In fact, uh, I would say this, most of the time we have Jesus moving and moving and moving from one location to another, surrounded by people. But here's the spot, right, where Jesus finally gets to lay his head down and take a nap. And here's what, here's what we're told, that on this sea, the storm popped up and the waves got wild. And, and so what happens is they go and they wake him up from the nap. They wake him up from the nap and they say, Jesus, like we need you. And what the story says is that Jesus spoke to the wind and the waves, and everything got calm. Everything in a moment got calm. Beautiful story. And then you got this story in Luke chapter 8, when they get on the other side of the lake, and there's a crowd that's waiting on Jesus, it says. And a man seeks out Jesus, and he says, hey, Jesus, like, I so much, like, need your help. I have a 12-year-old daughter at home, and she's dying. And here's what Jesus says. Jesus basically says, hey, calm down, like, take me to her. And so then as they begin walking and it says the crowd follows and Jesus is following this guy to his house in a sense to heal heal the 12 year old daughter. And and then along the way, right, there's this woman who's been suffering and she's been suffering for years. And she hears that this Jesus is coming by and she presses through the crowd and she touches him. In that moment, what scripture says is Jesus just stopped. He stopped and and he cried out and he said, who touched me? Like, you know, I don't know if they thought they were in trouble. I don't know. Who touched me? And then here's what he says. He says, I felt the power go out. Really cool statement. I felt the power go out. And I'm sure in that moment, it's awkward, right? It's uncomfortable. But the lady falls to her knees and says, it was me. It was me. Like, I touched you. And, and here's, and I, you know, and I deliberately touched you, right? She, she fell to her knees. And here's what he says. No worries. Basically, your faith has made you well go in peace. Another tremendous story. And then the final one, okay? You're like, these are a lot of Jesus stories. We can't go wrong talking about Jesus. 
Mark chapter one, here's what it says. In this story, we see Jesus, he gets up very early. He's getting up at the crack of dawn and it says that he goes to an isolated place to enjoy some peace and quiet as he's wanting to get alone to pray. I, I picture this, you know, Jesus, he's always moving. He's always in a crowd of people. Like probably that was the only time of the day that he could get alone. So he goes out and he gets alone and here's what it says. It, it says that basically his followers, they went out to find him. Like he couldn't even get a moment alone. They go out to find him. And, and they're basically saying, hey, Jesus, we got to get moving. We got work to do. And he says, let's go do this. This is what I came for. Let, let's be about the mission. And it says they started traveling and Jesus was preaching and casting out demons. Now you're like, oh, Kevin, like what in the world are we focusing on? And, and here's what I'm just going to say. Like all of that right? Like all these Jesus stories. In fact, here's some of the things I want us to reflect upon when we think about these Jesus stories. See, when I was thinking about these stories, one after another, right? All four of these stories, I thought it's so obvious that Jesus was always on the move, but he was always being interrupted. Think about that with me for a second. Jesus was always on the move, but he was always being interrupted. And, and when I look at this, you know, he's teaching, right? And people are knocking dirt in the room. I, I don't know about you. Like I, I teach, I, I would find that annoying. If dirt started falling in, I was like, why are you coming through the roof, right? Or, or you think about he's napping and they go and they wake him up. Like, seriously, can I just get a nap? He's on his way to go heal a dying 12-year-old. Like, this is, this is pretty important. And yet this lady cries out and he pauses in the middle of the road. Or he's trying to get alone to pray. <laughs> you can't even do that. They follow him there as well. See, from my perspective, Jesus is absolutely incredible because I don't think I would respond that way and I'm guessing you wouldn't either. That for most of us, here's the deal. We don't like to be interrupted. We don't like to be inconvenienced. And most of us would just say, like oftentimes we're just irritated. I think about those three eyes, those three words, right? Interrupted, inconvenienced, and irritated. When I think about when I'm walking around and I've got a list of stuff to do and I'm focused and I want to get it done, you know, those are the things. I don't want to be interrupted. I don't want to be inconvenienced. And, and oftentimes, like, I, I mean, I try not to get this way, but it, it just irritates me. And, and listen, I'm human, I believe you are too, and I believe you're probably affected in the very same ways. See, how do we respond when we get pushed beyond the limits? Especially when it comes to like someone asking us to do something for them. When someone is asking us to make room. Most of us would say, you don't, we, like, we, don't, Kevin, we don't have a lot of extra room in our lives. And I would say, I'm with you. I, I feel like there's too much to do, right? There's, there's always way too many things to do and there's just not enough space. And so time is really, really valuable. And, and I am a scheduler, right? Everything is in my calendar and, and it's pretty, a lot of times it's booked pretty tight. And so I would prefer not to have interruptions. But I know this that there are times where Jesus interrupts us. There are times when people have needs and I believe that Jesus says, hey, I need you to pause from your schedule and I need you to pause from just walking this straight line and I need you to be aware of the people around you. That you would be open to being hospitable, to making room in your life for other people when I ask that of you. Just this last week, I had a friend call and um, it was actually on sermon prep day. And he says, hey, I've got a really big ask. And this was in the morning. And, I, and instantly I was like, uh, you, you, you know, not the best response. But I, was, I knew when he said big ask, like, like what is he going to ask? And so I said, oh, okay, like what? Like what's the big ask? And he said this. He said, well, my dog is sick. And I'm out of town. My wife's working my, my dog is sick. My dog's at home. It's having stomach problems. Now, I'm going to try to keep this G-rated, but when I say stomach problems, go ahead and let your mind go there because that's exactly where my mind went and it's exactly what was going on, right? This dog was having stomach problems, which created other problems in the house, right? And so my friend says, 
I'm going to schedule an appointment, but can you pick that dog up? Can you pick my dog up and take it to the vet? And I said, you, you want me to pick up the dog with stomach problems and put him in my truck and like take him to the vet? I said, what if he has stomach problems in my truck? And he's like, oh, you won't do that. And I'm thinking, mm, <laughs> if he does, right? If this dog has stomach problems in my truck, I'm going to lose it, right? So I'm trying to be open to this. And I say, hey, if you can do it later in the day, I, like, I really want to get, I got to get this sermon done, right? This sermon about being interrupted. I, I got to get this sermon done. And so sure enough, he calls me back and he says, hey, it's your lucky day, right? Like, the appointment's not till later. My wife can do it. Ended up being, right, they didn't have to take the dog in. They, they could just get it medicine. I actually did go and help him get the medicine. But boy, thank you, Jesus, I didn't have to put that uh, sick dog in the truck. See, there are times, I, I know this, even that day. I mean, here I am preaching on interruptions, and it's still hard to do. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't want that inconvenience. I I don't like my day being broken up when I'm trying to write a sermon, right? I'm really picky about that. Some of you be grateful because it, yeah. But I, I, I didn't want that. And the other thing was I, I didn't want an accident to happen in the truck with this dog. And, and so there are times, right, where I think God is saying, hey, this may, like, this may be an interruption. This might be an inconvenience, but I really, like, I want you to be open to serving me when I ask you. Those are, that, that's really, really hard. And, and Jesus, and here's, here's the deal, right? Jesus was always communicating a powerful message. I mean, you think about Jesus walking around, he was always teaching, right? He was always teaching people something. He was always sharing truths. But the power was not just in the preaching. The power was in when he stopped and practiced what he was preaching, See, he recognized that people were listening to his words, but more than that, they were watching his actions. They were watching, they were paying attention to what he did. I mean, can you imagine him teaching and the dirt starts coming through the roof? And, and I picture this, right? Like, how would I respond? Uh, he's teaching in the middle of this room. It's packed. Dirt is falling through the roof because it, there's two knuckleheads on the roof, right? Trying to drop this guy down. And I, I can picture, and justifiably, right, if I read it, I probably wouldn't think any less of Jesus, but I could picture Jesus saying, hey, security, get the guys off the roof. Just tell them I will tend to them when the teaching is over. But please quit putting a hole in the roof, right? I think all of us would understand if that's how the scripture passage read. But Jesus responds so differently. Like, he doesn't see it as an interruption, he doesn't see it as an inconvenience. He sees it as a moment to live out the very words that he teaches. I was thinking about what would it be like if I was even, if I was preaching right now, right? If I was preaching and I was teaching and someone were to walk up in the middle of a sermon and say, hey, uh, it, your mission here at Crossbridge, right, is to lead people in a growing relationship with Jesus. So can I start that right now? I mean, what would I say? Would I say, hey, I just need you to sit down because I got a sermon to preach, right? Or would we pause and say, that's what we're about. Like, I'm gonna lead you into a relationship with Jesus. I had to think about that. That's a shame, isn't it? Like, that's the way we're programmed. But, but, the, but the reality is, like, what does it look like for God to break in our scheduled moments and ask us to do, to serve, to be available, to make room for other people around us? The message must always move us to mission. And if it doesn't, we've probably missed the message. I feel strongly about that. And that's why I, part of it, I've been talking in recent weeks about sending you, right? Because this message should send us. This message should push us to want to be a part of God's great mission. And if it doesn't, then go back and listen to the message again. Because when I look at Jesus, that's what he was about. James 1 puts it this way, but don't listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and you don't obey, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, you walk away, and you forget what you look like. 
But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. See, it's, it's bigger than just you and me. It's bigger than just, hey, man, this is my life. This is my schedule. This is my world. And it's about me. It's got to be. Jesus calls us to not just to be about ourselves, but to love him and to love others. And it's about us being on mission together. Jesus had a way of always making it about others. In fact, I loved in the story when he says in Mark chapter 1, verse 38, um, and Jesus replied, we must go on to other towns as well, and I'll preach to them too. And here's what he says, that is why I came. Jesus knew what he was about. Jesus knew like, that there was this plan and he was living it out. Jesus knew that he was pointing people to the Father and that's what his life was about. Do we believe that that's what we are made for? Do we believe that God could actually use us in a moment's notice? See, most of us don't like to be interrupted, inconvenienced, irritated. But I'm gonna tell you this, for the power of God to work through us we have to believe that the power of God can work in us to open us up to be interrupted, inconvenienced, and even sometimes irritated. Those are the places I think where, you know, God doesn't always fit in the boxes we try to put him in. But I do think what God desires is that we would walk around as he walked around and we would be open to the voices on the side of the road. You know, as I was reading through these stories, the thing that spoke really to me personally um, was just the power of Jesus. Luke chapter 5, 17, it says this, one day while Jesus was teaching, some Pharisees and teachers of the religious law were sitting nearby. It seemed these men showed up from every village in all Galilee and Judea, as well as from Jerusalem. And here's what it says. This was in the, the story I just read you. And the Lord's healing power was strongly with Jesus. Like, it, it, it's really saying, like, even as you just looked at this guy and he was walking around, it was obvious that the Lord's healing power, like, was with him. And see, then in Luke 8, this is a great picture, and this is what stuck with me. I've been carrying it around this week. You got this lady, right? Jesus is walking, and he's going to heal the, you know, the 12-year-old. He's walking with the man to the house, and you got this lady who's had this same, like, disease for years, and, and she just starts crying out, right? And, and in fact, um, crying out may be the wrong word. She knows she needs to get to him. And, and it's this picture. I, I picture Jesus walking and almost like, like a famous person, right? Someone that we're amazed with, that people are pressed in around him and, and they're following him, right? Like, like they're walking with him. And this lady presses through the crowd. She presses through the crowd and, you know, she reaches out and it says that she just touched his cloak. And, and here's the beauty of this, that she believed, that she believed in her heart that if she just touched the cloak, that she could be healed. Like, that's incredible. It, it, it's incredible. In fact, um, I just, I want to believe like that. I want to look at Jesus and, and these stories of Jesus, and I want to believe that the same power that I witnessed that, that, that came out of him is capable, like that same power is capable to work in me and through me. That same power is capable to work in you and through you because that's who Jesus is. And his invitation is for us to believe. See, it's so obvious that the people who were making their way to Jesus, the people who were interrupting and the people who were inconveniencing him and the people who were irritating him, right? They believed in his power. They were willing to go through a roof. They were willing to wake him up from a slumber. They were willing to seek him out and beg him to come to their house. They were willing to shout over the crowd to get Jesus' attention. They were willing to fight through a crowd to touch his robe. See, in that lady's heart, she just knew if she could touch him, everything would change. Like, what if that could be our prayer? God, if, if I am really gonna live in this world, being available for you, being willing to be interrupted and inconvenienced and, and to be used by you on mission, to make room, Lord, that I would love the people around me, 
I need your power. I need you. Um, here's, here's what I've been thinking about this week. As I wrote this sermon and I just applied it to my life, which is exactly what I do. I hope you know that. I, I don't just come up with words to share to you and like, oh, I hope, you know. These words have to work here first and then they come out and they come to you. But, but how they would work here is this. Um, you know, I, in, in the world we find ourselves, I find like it is so easy to get distracted. Let me, let me rephrase that. Like I can get distracted so easily. I can get distracted from the mission. Um, one of my concerns for us as a church would be this, that in all that's going on, all that's going on in the world, all that's coming up in the world, like all this stuff and everything we hear, let me just tell you something, it's distracting. And my prayer would be this, that God would refocus us. Not, not on what's happening in the news, not what's going on in the world, but God would refocus us on mission. And that he would say, I want you just to trust me that just as I walked around and, and God, like the Father, helped me to see the people around me and I was willing to be interrupted and inconvenienced and sometimes even irritated. Are we willing to be interrupted, inconvenienced, and irritated? Am I really willing to say my day is not about my day, God, but it's about you being your day. That when I get up in the morning, when you get up in the morning and you enter the day, that like taking the time for a person wouldn't be a special occasion, but it would be a daily occurrence because we're making room. We're making room for this message, which we believe in our hearts to become mission, which is lived as we walk and drive and go into the places that we go. Man, I, I, I believe that God wants to use you. I believe he wants you to be a part of his grander story. I believe that, that there are people in your path that he just wants you to see and he wants to use you to do powerful things. Father, I thank you I thank you for the opportunity to share your word. God, I pray that we would keep it about you. Uh, we can't go wrong if we keep it about you. God, I, I pray that maybe there would be people who are tuned in, who are worshiping while they're running or worshiping while they're driving or worshiping while they're sitting in their living room. God, I pray, would you just pull us to attention? Take our mind off of everything that's distracting us. And God, help us to make it about you. And when I say make it about you, that we would come to you again in a fresh and new way. And we would lay our hearts out and say, Jesus, like I'm yours. My day is yours. My moments are yours. And I want to be on mission for you, empowered by you, that you might use me with the people around me. I give you thanks in Jesus' name, amen.